There was water. If you know anything about the surrounding area in Nevada and Arizona, it's desert. So when um, people were migrating west, right, and they had their team of horses, and they're going through a desert, you think a spring or an oasis would come in handy? Absolutely. So what happens is because there's a spring or an oasis there, they give it a name, Las Vegas, and they put it on the map. And again, if you're looking at an early maps of this area, it's, it's Las Vegas. That's it. <coughs> So if you're a settler and you're traveling west and you happen to be down in this area, you're going to hit Las Vegas, <laughs> fill up your water barrels, um, get your horses, you know, water it up. Okay. So people keep stopping there and what pops up? What pops up? A town. A town. Absolutely. Some people put some buildings there. They figure, well, if you're coming by here, you might want to buy supplies and grain, and feed for the horses, and food, or whatever. So, boom, you start putting some buildings around there, and people actually turn it into a small little town, okay? Fast forward to the, the second age of tourism, which was? All together. Trains. trains, right? If you are building train routes, and you look at a map and you see there's only one town and you know hundreds of square miles, what are you gonna do? Hmm? Yeah, you're gonna build a train right through it, right? Absolutely. And so Vegas got its break by the fact that on the southern western trail for trains, they ran trains right through it. Okay? So now you got trains running through it, you got settlers going through it, what happens to the town? It's bigger. Right. Now, two things happened besides the fact that it was an oasis there that cemented Vegas into what it is today. Because think about this, okay? What are the odds that some remote little town in the desert becoming the entertainment capital of the United States? You talk about a long shot, right? It's like uh, 48 to 500, right? But two things happened pretty quick in su succession, right? 1914 was a big year for the world. Why? World War I. Excellent. You guys got your history down. Okay. World War I starts in <coughs> August, and we as America stay out of it for a long time. We don't want to send our boys over to Europe and fight some other war. But after a while, we, we get drawn into it. And before World War I, our standing army was very, very small. I mean, it was almost <coughs> non-existent. So we have to go from having a very, very, very small army to a very, very, very big army overnight. Okay? And so, what happened was whoever was in charge of planning at the time they basically looked at the country and they said, everyone to the east of the Mississippi goes to, I think it was Benning, Fort Benning for basic training for the Army. Anybody west of the Mississippi goes to California, Pendleton maybe? You learn my Army people in here? At some base in California, okay? And so what happens is that we start drafting the Doughboys and the people on this side of the Mississippi, right, they have to report to basic. Back then, no airplanes, no automobiles. How do you get from one place to another? Train. Train, okay. Now think of this, okay. Guys and gals, um, you've been a Kansas farm boy all your life for... Um, Wisconsin farm boy or a shopkeeper in Kansas City. And you've lived your life all there. And you're 18, 19, 20, and you get drafted. And you're going to basic. So you get on the train to go to California. Okay. Your last night 
of freedom because you're going to go into basic. How long is basic? Eight weeks? Ten weeks? Your last night of freedom, the train's going to stop in this little place called Las Vegas. Next day you're going to report for basic training. What are you going to do on your last night of freedom? What are you going to do? Let, let's, let's be adults here. We can have a frank conversation. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah. All of the above. You want to drink? You want to take opium? You want to gamble? You want to chase prostitutes? That's your night to do it, buddy. Because after that, you're going to go to basic. And after that, you're probably going to be shipped off to Europe. And you could get easily killed over there. So you probably got some money saved up. The train stops here in Las Vegas. So now what does the town turn into? Sin City. And when I mean Sin City, it's pretty clean today compared to what it was back then. They basically had tents. It was a tent city. Brothels everywhere. All right? You guys know what brothels are, right? Houses of ill repute, prostitution. <coughs> now, all of this was illegal, right? Didn't matter, right? Where there is a demand there will be <coughs> supply right just like marijuana is illegal now right so no one smokes marijuana because it's against the law right don't answer me. you see what I'm saying though this became sin city okay all these dough boys saying you might as well live a little so World War I comes to an end. And they stop shipping uh, the, the, G, or the, the GIs here. Normally, Vegas would have dried up and gone away. Because there's no more people looking for that. Except what happened closely after the end of World War I, big thing in the economy? Great Depression. Great Depression. All right? FDR was the president, and FDR decided I'm going to get the economy going again by doing all these public works projects. Anybody know what the largest public works project during the Great Depression was? Hoover Dam. Or Hoover Dam, yes. The Hoover Dam. So, again, all these guys from all over the U.S. without jobs, single men, right, hear about these great jobs, this great, these great jobs here at the public works project. And they show up and they get good jobs, they get good pay, especially for the Depression. So they work hard for six days a week. What do you think they want to do on the seventh day? <coughs> All of the above, right? And of course, you know, single men there, there's always single women that are looking to be entrepreneurs themselves, right? <coughs> and so again, the party just keeps going in Vegas. Drugs, prostitution, Alcohol, which is again illegal, does it matter? No. So by this time, probably in the mid 30s, the, the biggest economic driver in the state of Nevada is all illegal activities. It, it by far was the biggest economy in Nevada. So you've got two choices. What are they? You can go in and shut it all down, shut down your economy, or make it legal. That's exactly what Las Vegas did, very quietly. Now, they couldn't legalize booze, because that was a federal statute. But moral statutes include prostitution and gambling. So very quietly, <coughs> They passed laws in, in Nevada that said gambling is now legal in, in Nevada and prostitution is now legal in Nevada. This is back in the 30s and the 40s. Pretty revolutionary stuff. Now, how did they do it? They did it very quietly. Shh. Don't let the straights around the rest of the world know that we got a party going on. So, um, prohibition gets repealed party keeps going on. And so now Vegas at this time is not a very nice place. 
it's the crack house row of the United States. Because people who are coming to Vegas now are not your upstanding citizens. They're coming to see a show, coming to see, you know, um, magic shows or whatever. They're basically to get their freak on very quietly and then go back to wherever they came from. Okay? So, one person is responsible for turning this all around and making Vegas, transforming Vegas into the modern day adult playground that it is, which is, you know, changing it from gambling to gaming. Now, every now and then I'll get someone who will get this right. Let's see if there's, here's my Las Vegas experts in here. <coughs> who was the one person that is credited as the father of modern day Las Vegas? When? Nope. Too soon. Mohan. Oh, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm thinking Godfather. You're thinking Godfather. <laughs> you are the guy that Joe Green is based upon is this person. Yeah, you're, you're, man, you're so close. Bugsy Siegel. You looked it up, didn't you? That's okay. Bugsy Siegel. Anybody seen the movie Bugsy, by the way? Came out in the 90s with Annette Bening and um, Warren Baden. It's actually a pretty good movie. There was this low-level enforcer named Bugsy Siegel. Now, you never call him Bugsy to his face because he would kill you. Bugsy is crazy. I mean, it's mobster talk for crazy. And he was crazy. I mean, it, you know, if they needed someone killed, they'd say, Bugsy, go rub that guy out. All right, no problem. Boom, boom, boom. And so what had happened was he was up in New York with the mob up there. Okay, Miles Lansky was his boss. And they were having some union problems in Los Angeles out here. So they send Bugsy from New York to Los Angeles to basically take care of the problems, kill some people, pay some people off. Okay? And he gets it there in Los Angeles and he loves it. You know, New York's drab and dreary, you know, cloudy, and he gets to Los Angeles in the wintertime, and it's like paradise. He's like, I love it here. I'm never going. So he um, calls Miles Lansky and says, man, you got more problems out here. I need to stick around and, and take care of these folks. And Miles Lansky's like, the fine, whatever.